I'm your host with the most local 23. You're joining me for Bloodbound 2, Chapter 16. The end. You watch in horror as Pry leads a small army of vampires through the doors of the mall. Hello, Fives. A ten is here. How? No. How did they find us? Oh, please, as if you thought this dump could hide you for forever. She gives a signal to the vampires behind her. Get them now. The vampires rush at you, weapons drawn, fangs out. You realize then that you recognize some of them. Traitors. There's no time for that. We need to protect our people. Jack's on Shisa's sword and runs at the advancing vampires. Camilla flicks her wrists and her daggers appear in her hands with a twirl. This is it. Oh man, I do not want to die in a mall. She grabs something out of her bag. One of the orders repeating crossbows. Good thing I always come prepared. She starts firing, blasting crossbow bolts into the oncoming horde. A tall, lanky vampire drops first, then a short, one sprinting one, both crumbling in ash mid-stride. New le kill leader. But there's just too many of them. Even as the vampires scramble and hide, the attacking horde rushes across the mall towards them. Adrian leaps into the ranks and driving his fists to a skull and hurling another vampire over a railing. Amy, be safe. I will. To your left, you see a trio of Priya's vampires speeding their way toward the escaping vampires. Help me. Help me, please. Come here, cutie. I just want to play. I have to stop them. Use a UV grenade, my shoe, a pretzel cart. <sighs> yeah, but I'm afraid the UV grenade will hit them too. Oh, God. Okay, fine. Hold it right there. Hurry to the box of UV grenades, grab one, ripping off the safety pin with a, your teeth. Incoming! You launch a grenade at the vampires that explodes with a burst of intense light. Ah! Vampires flinch away, their skin burning as they flail. Yes! Another wave of vampires comes right after the first one. Your allies are about to be overwhelmed. Oh no. When Arnold rushes in. Come on, let's go! Planting himself between the fleeing allies and Priya's vampires. Not one more step. Yes, what is what, old man? See for yourself. He lifts a massive World War II flamethrower, aiming it right at them. Holy! Arnold fire, swallowing the vampires in a massive plume of fire. Goddamn right. Liv runs up beside you. I'm not about to let these sons of bitches win. She reaches down to her garter and whips up a golden-bladed chakram. Whoa. Little promise I made myself after I got attacked. Never be unprepared again. She hurls it with incredible precision. It whistles through the air, taking an attacker's head clean off. That's cabaret, bitch. <laughs> okay, I like her. She winks at you and takes off. You look around and try to take stock of the room. The whole mall is a chaotic mess of scrambling bodies, screaming faces, and clanging blades. You spot Adrian at the far end, bloodied, weaving in a fistfight with one of Baron's men. How can you work for the man who killed your clan leader? We go where the pay is. Adrian growls and lunges forward. Camilla squares off against the archive clerk, and her blades interlocking with his staff. You traitor. You were one of Adrian's clan. I serve the highest power. Nearby, Lily lies on an upper railing, sniping down into the crowd. I like you, Lily. Hey, buddy, you got something in your eye. A vampire goes down with a scream as Lily's bolt punches through his head, while nearby, Jax disarms one of Priya's guards. I'm gonna make you pay for what you've done to my people. All of you. A vampire spots you and grins, making his way towards you. Crap. Back away, noticing he has a knife in his hand. Come here, little mortal. Let me slice you up real nice. I should try to get his knife. Run. You don't hesitate to turn and run away. Help! I've got you. With a flick of her wrist, Camilla sends a dagger spinning through the air, and it buries itself in the hilt in a skull. 
He lurches forward, tumbling over the railing and down to the floor below. Thanks. Just stay sharp. As you take a moment to recover, you see Adrian circling the Baron's men. Most have been taken out, but a couple still linger. The boss had no love for you, pretty boy. I figured he'd savor this moment. No, oh, but he's dead, though, dummy. The biggest of the guards rushes in, but Adrian, lighter and faster on his feet, easily sidesteps him and jumps up onto his back. What? Adrian growls and stabs his fingers into the guy's guard's eyes. The guard, distracted, Adrian rips out his throat. The guard goes down, gurgling and twitching until Adrian brings his heel down on the back of his skull. Nearby, Camilla ducks a swing or the archive clerk's staff, keeping her distance as she tries to figure out how to advance. I thought you joined with Adrian to do good, to help make the world a better place. A better place for vampires. I've seen enough of humanity to know it should not continue. He attacks again, but this time Camille is ready. She leaps high into the air and lands gracefully on the archive clerk's staff. No. Yes. She jumps again, holds her daggers ready, plunging them into his neck. <coughs> she flips him over, jerking her daggers into a wide arc, cutting his head clean off. A scream makes you whirl around. What? Nearby, Arnold sinks to one knee, clutching the sides of his head as he roils from a psychic pain. And standing behind him, a long, curved sickle in his hand. You know, I kind of liked you. It'd be a shame I'm gonna have to kill you. Jameson. Oh, hello, Amy. Have you any more interesting visions lately? Actually, no. Weird. Seething, you start running towards him, but you're too slow and he's too far away. He drives a sickle in the side of Arnold's neck. Shooting his blood across the room, Arnold's pleading eyes meet yours. Protect Lola! And before he can say anything, Jameson jerks the sickle out, severing his head clean off his shoulders. No, Arnold! You didn't kill Jameson when you had the chance. As Arnold's body crumples to ash, Jameson grins, and then a crossbow bolt appears in his side, and then another. Ugh! From up on the higher floor, you hear a shout. Psychic power's that. With a hiss, Jameson hurls himself up on the next floor and vanishes into the shadows. He's getting away. Let him run. Focus on the enemies who are left. The sound of crying reaches you through the din of battle. Who is that? You try to find the source of the noise and see Lula, a vampire, tugging on her wrist. Come here. No, leave me alone. She futilely tries to break free to no avail. Lula, I have to help her somehow. Your eyes dart around, you spot the repeater crossbow you picked up at the Order HQ. Use the crossbow. You jerk up the crossbow, leveling it at the vampire. Get your hands off of her. He turns to you, confused, staring at the crossbow. Come on, that thing's not real. That's some kind of movie prop. Snarling, he steps towards you. You fire the bolt punching through his chest. He lets out a stun gurgle before bursting in ash. Nothing like a souvenir. Lula brushes some of the ash off of her face and smiles. Thank you, Miss Amy. You're welcome. Now get out of here, kid. Get to safety. Over here. Nikhail stands by the side exit with a few other vampires. Lula rushes to join him. Panting, you search for your friends when you see... Priya. Priya and Camilla face each other, circling and waiting for the other to strike. So, your guys' is new pet. Oh, please, you're just jealous that I'm his beautiful, powerful princess. Why, you're, you're nothing but an old, dethroned queen. You wish you were... But before she can finish, Camilla's hand flick up, and her knife whistles through the air, slicing clean across Priya's cheek. Oh, my face! You talk too much. You bitch! A lot of B-words in this one. Priya lunges forward, drawing her own blade, a long ritual dagger. She slashes at Camilla, but the older vampire weaves around, dodging. Camilla's le side's left, but Priya's already there. She drives her dagger into Camilla's side. No, Camilla! 
The little guy has taught me a thing or two while you were gone. I know all your moves. We'll see about that. Camila tries to push back, but Priya takes advantage of Camila's injury and pushes her against the wall, twisting the blade. <sighs> oh, does that hurt? Camila grits her teeth and shoves Priya back as Priya staggers. Camila collapses, holding her midsection and groaning in pain. No, I have to do something. This is your chance to fight at Camila's side and end Priya's reign of terror. Once and for all. Hey, speaking of which, guys, uh, Blair Witch uh, on Twitch. Feel free to come join. It's scary. It's scary. Coming out in the woods. Priya draws her knife back, ready to drive into Camila's road. When you grab a vase and smash it over her head, sending her staggering. No, you don't. Amy. As Priya wobbles, pulling shards of porcelain out of her head, Camila struggles to her feet behind you and pulls a knife out with a hiss of pain. Look me this impudent whelp. I'm not letting her hurt you. This is all very touching, but if you two excuse me, I have an empire to build. She goes to backhand you, but in the flash, Camila is there to grab her wrist. No. Camila squeezes, and Priya's wrist snaps. Ah! Priya staggers away, holding her mangled wrist. You stupid bitch! Camila tosses you the dagger she pull, just pulled from under her side, and the two of you square off against Priya, whose gaze darts between you. Fine, fine. You want to fight two on one? Because I don't. Priya kicks up a pistol lying by a fallen vampire and clutches it with her injured hand, uninjured hand, his barrel level to chew. At least you'll make a hot corpse. No. But there's no time to dodge as she pulls the trigger. You reel backward as Camila pushes herself in front of you, shielding you from the barrage of bullets that Priya unloads in your direction. Camila! Just stand by me. Camila! Stop! If I stop, you die. Another bullet hits her in the chest, making her gasp and take a step back. Blood oozes from her wounds, dripping onto the floor. And you can't die. Camila, please! Soon. She's out. We strike. Priya pulls the trigger again, but it clicks uselessly out of ammo. Oh, stupid thing! She tosses it away, and Camila uses the opening to rush forward and slice open Camila Priya's chest with a knife. No! Priya kicks Camila hard enough that Camila goes flying. Camila! Priya cackles and leaps at you, grabbing you by the face and lifting you into the air. You were always playing coy with me, Amy. And now this! The saddest thing is that we never got to be together. You... Technically, you... You, you killed people, but you know. Unless I keep you for myself on a leash where you belong. Rhea, you're deplorable. Mm, perhaps, but I know you like it. You never know when to quit. Rhea snarls and a brick comes hurtling through the air, striking the side of her head hard. She drops you and you fall to the ground. Camila stands behind her, snarling. You won't touch her again. Camilla's eyes meet yours. She's got her knife in her hand. You've got yours. And all at once, you know exactly what to do. Now. The two of you lunge forward, moving in perfect sync, coming at Priya's from both sides. You drive your knife into her front. Camilla stabs her through the back. You've got to be kidding me. She collapses to her knees, spitting blood as Camilla kneels down, picking up a jacket wooden stake. You'll pay for this, you old hag! You know what your problem is, McCrox. The twirl, she plunges a stake into Priya's arm. Priya shrieks as her body convulses and turns to ash. You never learn to respect your elders. On your knees, you catch your breath and stare at the ash before you. We did it, she's really gone. She is. Amy the Vampire Slayer. Camilla helps you up. Thank you, Amy. If she has escaped again, well, I don't know what to think about it. Now she won't be able to hurt anyone else. Looking around, you realize the fight is over. 
those who aren't dead or wounded or recovering. Did, did we win? Depends on your definition of winning. He stares out at the destruction. The bodies, ash, and fallen weapons. Adrian puts a hand to his on his shoulder. Your clan did well. We were able to fend off guys as a Turk. Their numbers may be a little thin, but those who gave their lives today fought for a good cause. They're heroes. Dax takes a deep breath and nods. You're right. The most important thing is protecting the survivors. Hey, Nikhil, get a quick head count. I want to see how many. He turns, but Nikhil isn't nearby. Frowning, Jack scans his clown. Where did he go? Just then, everyone's phones go off with alerts. Slowly pulls her phone out and groans. Guys, it's Fangbook alert. Guys has another video. Play it. They all crowd around Lily's phone as she hits play. Greetings to those of you watching. Congratulations on surviving the attack. Do I regret to inform you that your victory, your victory issue will be short-lived, as well as empty. After all, surely you know I always have a backup plan. The camera pans to the back of a truck. Through the window you see familiar faces. We will be executing these traitors tonight at the Metropolitan. A broadcast the whole thing. That is, unless my wayward disciples come to me, unarmed, to surrender. My soldier, my queen, and let's throw in the blood keeper and the new blood while we're at it. Wait, am I the new blood? That's all I get? No, I think Lily's the new blood, isn't she? Or... The video guy reaches in the van, grabbing the kale by the throat. No, oh, please... Ice takes his, Mikhail's arm in his and smiles, and then snaps it brutally in half, just below the elbow. Ah! Oh! Guys drops Mikhail to the ground, wiping his bloodied fingers on his shirt. Come, surrender, or pay the price. The video ends, leaving you all in stunned silence. That, that goddamn monster. Ah, oh, Mikhail. And he got Lula and a bunch of others, too. What are we gonna do? Adrian takes a deep breath and rubs his hands over his face. We can't just walk into a trap. But we can't sacrifice the hostages, either. Every war has sacrifices, Adrian. This one included. They knew what they were getting into when they volunteered to stay in New York. What are you saying, Seed? We just let them die? Like hell! We've come this far. We fought this hard. I'm not about to give up. I didn't say anything about giving up. It's just that sometimes to win a king, you have to sacrifice a pawn. The Jack sees Adrian Poltz, uh, hand on his shoulder. This is a no-win solution situa situation. You know that even if we go, Gaius won't keep his word. So our lives are more important than theirs? I only meant that we need to stop Gaius and handing, handling it ourselves over to him all but guarantees defeat. I'm gonna side with Adrian. Jack's the right. Gaius will just kill us as soon as we walk through the door. What, you two? You don't care about Nikhil or Lula and the others? I didn't say that. You have to agree that this is the best strategy. I don't have to agree with anything. I'm going and that's that. As you all argue, Lily sighs and steps into the, onto a nearby bench, clapping her hands to get your attention. Hey, enough. I can't take this anymore. Lily looks out at the remaining vampires injured and dejected. Strategy can only get us so far. This is what Gaius wants us to do. He wouldn't hesitate to sacrifice his pawns, but we're not like that. We've never been like that. Every single one of us is indispensable, and if we're going to beat Gaius and his army, we need everyone. 
At some point, you just have to do the right thing or die trying. And it's not like we're helpless. Gaius thinks he has the upper hand, but he doesn't know about the stake. He doesn't know about our secret weapon. Adrian and Camilla glance at each other in realization. Jax grins. He thinks it's a trap for us, but you're saying we flip it on him. Use his own ambush against him. We get there. We play his game. And then all we need to do is for one of us to get close enough to put that stake into his chest. Come on, guys. It's a good plan. We can totally do this. You all stare at her and then Adrian nods. She's right. We can do this. Hell yeah. Rock and roll. You all turn to stare, Camila. Is that not a thing you all say? I'll allow it. You lean over, squeezing Lily's shoulder. Can I just say, Lily Spencer, that uh, that was one big hell of a rousing speech? Oh shucks. Jax comes up and gives Lily a grateful nod. Adrian smiles, and even Camila seems impressed. Then it's settled. We're going in like we plan to surrender, save the hostages, and then stake that freak. Gaius is finally going down. The five of you get ready for the confrontation that awaits you. Going over the plan. All of us will go in except Camila. Gaius will want her the most and we won't risk her hurting us until he has her. We'll stall for as much time as we can until Camila gets into position and then stakes him from behind. She's the fastest of any of us. Will you be okay with that, Camila? She may be the fastest, but she's also wounded right now. Camila takes out the stake, letting it rest in her palm as she gazes down. I stabbed Gaius once, before, and that was when I still had feelings for him. I welcome the chance to do it again. Yes, but he's also going to think of that. You look around at everyone, their face is somber yet determined. This could be the last time I can talk to one of them alone. This choice will determine which character you want to have the deepest relationship with. Choose wisely. Ah, not a diamond choice. Okay, fine. Be that way. So, um, I'm really surprised Adrian didn't fight Forrest and against Priya, but I get it. Girl on girl, you know, thingy. Little. Hey, what about if I want to be with myself? I trust myself the most. Shut up, locum. Pick the goddamn choice. You know it's me. You and Adrian separate from the group as they continue to talk strategy. Adrian, I... He cups the side of your face in his hands, his eyes stormy with emotion. I don't know what uh, will happen, but whatever he does, if he tries to... He takes a deep breath, his thumb rushing against your jaw. I'll protect you, Amy. No matter what it takes. He chose to be closest with Adrian, and I'll protect you. He tries to smile, but it falls flat as he stares in your eyes, intimate and longing. You surge up to kiss him, hugging him around the neck as you pour all of your emotions into the kiss. Adrian. He gasps, as if in pain, and kisses you back, holding you tight. His body presses against your solid and safe. Amy, I... He whispers against you, but you silence him with another kiss and another until you're dizzy from it. Finally, you break away, panting for breath, and lay your head on his chest. We'll get through this. We have to. And when it's finally done, you'll be free. You'll have peace. With you. He holds you for another moment, but you both know your time is limited. Sighing, you return to the others hand in hand. Adrian gives you a solemn long nod. Then... I guess this is it. Let's head out. Follow the others as they make for the mall's exit, ready to take on Gaius. But you notice something stuck in the leaves of a nearby plant. A piece of canvas. Really, now. You glance at the others and head for the painting fragment. There's something almost comforting about this one. Visions of Adrian, Camilla, and their past together. I still do not know why Gaius decided to let you come. I could have handled this well enough on my own. There might be trouble. I'm here to help. Eh, take it. I think it's our last one, isn't it? 
You reach out and touch the edge of the fragment, the memory rushes at you in a blur of sound and color. Ah. Uh. You see an old wooden ship flying a British flag, the HMS Montjoy. It sails furled as it sits docked in a New York Haber harbor. Of course they have a pirate ship, but they, they kind of need this artwork when they do the pirate thingy in the future. This is to build your anticipation. There's no one around except for the two figures that emerge out of the shadows, creeping towards the gangplank. One of the figures accidentally bumps into one into the other. Watch it. Eh, looks kind of cute. Apologies. Camille sighs, shaking her head at Adrian. It's not fond exasperation, but rather cold frustration. I still do not know why guys decided to let you come. I could have ended this well enough on my own. There might be trouble. I'm here to help. I don't need your help. I work alone, and I can get myself out of trouble just fine. Instead, here I am babysitting guys as late as Prodigy. Adrian frowns, but doesn't answer. Camilla scoffs and resumes her creeping, quickly making her way up the gangplank. Alright, the British naval plans should be located in the captain's quarters. I will go on ahead. You stay here and play lookout. I'm coming with you. Gaius gave me an order, and I intend to carry it out. Camilla turns to him, her upper lip curled. Just because he is calling you his soldier does not mean you have to act like a lapdog. I just want to carry out the mission you lead. I'll intervene if I have to. Camilla sighs in vexation and turns to in the companion way, then freezes. Two redcoats are standing guard. It means the plans are definitely in there. Adrian opens his mouth to speak, but Camilla is already launching four daggers out. Out of my way! Her screams are cut off as Camilla slashes both of her throats at once, sending two sprays of blood into the air. The two guards topple over, twitching until they lie still. Too easy. She turns to Adrian with a cocky grin, but it falters when she sees the knife in his hand. What? Adrian throws the knife straight at her, but instead of hitting her, it embeds itself into the throat of a third redcoat behind her, one about to drive a bayonet into her back. The redcoat goes down, scratching at his bleeding throat, until he lies too still. You... She takes a moment to compose herself, clearing her throat. Well, I could have handled the man, but I will admit there was a good throw. Oh, I know. Camilla rolls her eyes and barges into the captain's quarters, which are empty. Do not get cocky, Reigns. You haven't earned it. She begins rooting through the captain's belongings as Adrian walks in. The truth is, I'm getting used to all this. The strength, the immortality, it's been difficult. I understand. I do. You have only a few years to come to terms with this, whereas I've had... Decades. Centuries. Adrian lets out a sharp breath. As he helps her search for the naval plans, he glances at her. Gaius turned you as well, didn't he? He did. What's it been like? Camilla pauses, singing it over. Interesting. That's it? There are far worse fates than interesting. I know, I still just mean, do you still do you remember your life from before sometimes not as often as i used to but there are some parts of it i will never forget adrian takes a silver locket from his pocket gazing at it sadly yes i i know what you mean mela notices the locket and her brow creases just slightly rains i'm, I'm sorry about your family adrian starts and nods and puts away the locket Thank you. Camille moves from the shelves to the captain's desk. She opens the door and nods, her eyes sparkling. A living for an eternity may have its challenges, but it does make you quite adept at knowing where people hide things. Uh huh, as you've been searching. She lifts a false bottom in the door, revealing the naval plans underneath. Come on, let's get going before any more redcoats show up. As the two of them leave the ship, Adrian hesitates. Wait, I have an idea. 
whispers to Camilla's ear, and her lips quirk into an almost smile. You're definitely learning. Moments later, the two stroll together down the harbor as a ship burns behind them, the laughter swallowed by the shadows. You come back to yourself gradually, a smile on your lips. Hmm. Okay. When you arrive at the Metropolitan, you find it dark. Gaius would be inside. Make no mistake. You need to approach him with caution. I'll see you all in there. Mila, be careful. She hesitates and then steps forward to hug him. Adrian holds her tightly, his expression sober and grim. Only if you are. She pulls away and nods at the rest of you and then breaks off from your party, carrying the stake. The rest of you continue up the stairs towards the front doors of the Met. Once inside, you only take a second to admire the Great Hall before following the others through the dimly lit museum. At the end of the hall, you find the Greek and Roman exhibition, and there, sprawled on the throne in the back. Ah, so you've decided to be noble after all. Guys smiles coldly, his chin resting on his fist as he sits casually upon the throne he's made for himself. Before him are the clan Matsuo hostages on their knees with their arms and legs wrapped in chains. So you've come. Don't worry, Nikhil. We'll get you all out of here. Missy me. It'll be all right, Lula. Adrian steps forward, leveling a glare at Guys. We've done as you ask. We're here. We surrender, release the hostages. Gaius, his head still propped on his fist, his disinterested pose, and your party. And where is Camilla? It doesn't matter, you need to uphold your end of the bargain. Of course it matters. Otherwise, how am I to know you've all surrendered? What game are you playing, Reigns? You step up to Adrian's side. Camilla didn't care enough about the hostages to come. She'd rather sacrifice the others and surrender herself. Gaius lifts an eyebrow. Hmm. She was always the smartest of your lot. Still, I suppose I'll have to track her down myself. With an almost bored wave of his hand, the chains around the hostages shatter. Sweet freedom. I want to go home. I want to go home. We will, hon. We will. Hostages hurry towards the exit, Jack's quickly counting to make sure they're all accounted for. Sir, let me stay and help. No, Nikhil. You've already been through enough. Help the others back to the safe house. A goal, his face crusted with blood, reluctantly nods and scoops Lilla up into his arms before chasing after the others. The four of you stay where you are, facing down guys. Are you finally satisfied? Where the hell did you learn that trick with the chains? It's his power. I can feel it even from here. It's like this dark, terrible shadow all around him. Like there's no humanity left. Even you can feel it. A menacing aura that fills the entire room and makes you shiver. Gaius, you're going down. This is all going to end the night. But Gaius doesn't seem very affected by your words and doesn't even look in your direction. Oh, Amy. Ever the optimist, aren't you? Gaius finally moves, stretching himself out on his throne. Ah, oh, what a delicious feeling to finally be free, to have so much life and death clinging to my fingertips. I have missed this, the taste of blood sweetened with fear, the screams of my prey. It is as it was once, back when Rhea was our goddess, and we waged war on mortals. Before the order, before the fear, before being hunted and slaughtered. Now, now I myself am a god, and my dream, our dream, can finally be realized. Once more, friends, one more last time, I offer my hand in friendship. Join me, and you will tear down the edifices of mankind and erect a new order, a better order, 
Join me and we shall live free. Reaches out to you and none of you move. Never. Isa's face hardens to an angry scowl. You are my soldier, my creation. I made you. No, you ruined me, corrupted me, convinced me that I was the monster you needed. But I'm not. I'm better than that. I'm better than you. I am so much more than your soldier. I don't fight for you. I fight for a better world. For those in need. For those who dream. Adrian's hand finds yours and he clenches it tightly. I fight for her. For one fleeting moment, Caius actually looks stunned and then shakes his head. And you leave me no choice. If you will not be my allies, you are my enemies and... My enemies would be eradicated. Ayas's gaze flits to you, beginning with your little pet. Ayas takes a step forward and Adrian stands his ground, muscles tight and ready to act. And suddenly you see a shape descend from the ceiling, plunging down like a meteor. Camila lands right behind Gaius, perfectly silent, the stake in her hands aimed at his back. You know, I feel like this is a moment where Thor hit in Thanos, and he said, you should have gone for the head. Hey, Camilla, you should have probably already stabbed him, my note. And then... What? She freezes in place, a stake just a centimeter from Gaius. That's because Jameson is probably somewhere watching him. You all stare, stunned, as Camilla struggles against invisible blowns. Gaius chuckles low in his throat. Oh, Camilla... He turns to her, stroking his hand down her cheek, and his whole body burns with ancient power. My queen! I... She's frozen, struggling, her limbs paralyzed, like she's trapped in her own body. My one regret is that you'll not be able to appreciate my power to share in it. His fingers descend down her neck, tapping the spot. Above her heart. I can feel your blood singing in your veins. The decadent call of it. And I control it. You'll never control me. Mila jerks forward, the stake almost touching Gaius. He sighs, raising a hand to hit her with a blast of blue fire. Sends her flying. Is that really what it's come to? You hate me so much, you're ready to die for it. Are you ready to kill me, my queen? Camilla forces herself up to a knee, hair singed, a furious scowl on her face. My name is Camilla. So be it. Gaius raises his hand. Palm flooding with a swirling blue fire. When Adrian comes diving at him from the side. Die! Effortlessly, Gaius raises a hand behind his back, freezing Adrian midair. Adrian snarls, grasping for him. But Gaius flicks his hand to the side, sending Adrian smashing to the wall. Lily and Jack's charge from the sides. Lily whips out a crossbow, firing a flurry of bolts. Which Gaius effortlessly catches. Throwing right back at her. One tears through her knee, another on her side, a third her cheek. Well, he goes down, gurgling. This is Jax, reaches Gaius with the other side. He sweeps his katana in a wide arc towards Gaius's neck. Gaius doesn't even flinch. One moment his arm is at his side, the next it's up, holding the blade. Getting awfully tired of this. He jerks Jax forward and smashes him down with a brutal headbutt, wrenching the sword out of his hand. Oh god, he's too powerful. He's just too powerful. Enough. Gaius raises his spare hand up, the fire swirling around it. As he does this, all your friends scream and writhe. I... You... Bastard... The veins glow with growing fire. The body's burning from inside. They're going to die right here, right now. 
No! And then you see it. Resting just a foot away from you. You look up and see a guy standing before his throne. Jack's a sword in one hand, the other now fully consumed in flame. His attention is zeroed in on the others. I'm sorry, old friends. This... And it has to end this way. Grimly, you pick up the stake, pull yourself to your feet, and your body sore and battered. Eyes can control the others through their shared bloodline, but I'm not a vampire. He can't control me. I'm the only one who can do this. Stealing yourself, you creep towards guys from behind, and then start running. This is it. You raise the stake up high, ready to finally plunge it into Gaius's body when he turns to face you. Time seems to stop. Nice try. Remember, you're the blood keeper. When you look down, you see Jax's sword in your hand. The sword he's buried up to the hilt in your chest. Someone screams your name as pain lances through your entire body. Your vision throbs red. Blood bubbles between your lips. You can't breathe. But your focus nearest to Gaius' burning eyes, the weight of the stake in your hand. I don't try. I win. And with the last of your strength, you heave your arm up and stab down straight into his chest. The stake pierces through his flesh and into his heart. Gaius lets you go and topples backward onto his throne, gasping and clutching in his chest. What? What is... What have you done? Watch in horror as he rises, screams, his skin spiderwebbing with cracks as he scrabbles at the stake. No! No! His pleading chokes off his vines, sprout out of his mouth, bursts out of his stomach, and snake through the corners of his eyes. He screams as his skin hardens and pales his body freezing limb by limb until Oh my and then it's done. Guy stands there transformed trapped in a prison of wood. Gaius tree, okay. For a moment, everything is deathly still. Quiet, and everyone stares at the still tree with disbelief. Your friends breathe a collective relief sigh as they're freed from Gaius's power. We did it. You turn to the others with a smile, looking up at them as you realize you've somehow fallen to your knees. You fall to the floor, your entire front soaked in blood. No! Amy! Hedrian bounds towards you, cradling you in his arms as you gurgle blood. Amy, please. No! Hedrian's hand hovers uselessly over the sword protruding from your chest. You struggle to breathe, the pain in your chest overwhelming, agonizing, and still you smile up at him. We won, Adrian. Yes, you... You saved us, you... You saved all of us. Adrian presses his forehead to yours as tears streak down his cheeks. But you can't die. I can't lose you. I, I can't. You raise a weak, bloodied hand. Adrian tra takes it and presses it to his cheek, kissing your palm while, while tears continue to flow. I don't want to leave you. Shudder as everything begins to fade, the edges of your vision start to blacken. Adrian, I... I'm really... I'm cold. Adrian's hand strokes your cheek tenderly, drawing you close. Adrian... Listen to me, Amy. You are the best thing that happened to me in 200 years. You're the most wonderful, amazing person. And I love... But his voice begins to fade, and you sink further and further into the dark, until it carries you away completely.
the end. Or is it? And then, you awake in the dark and the cold. Your whole body feels so strange. You don't know where you are, you don't know what's happening, your heart pounds in horror, you, you can't move, you even flail, you're, you're trapped somewhere, somewhere tight and dark. Still, something bubbles up inside you, something searing, a change, a transformation. Mmm. Oh my god. You've completed Blood Mountain 2. Secret scene time! You collected 9 out of 9 portrait fragments. By collecting all 9 por portrait fragments, you unlocked a fucking bonus scene. When the sap of the tree rests in the blessed chalice, the sky shall turn red, the earth shall be torn asunder, and the first shall walk again. Somewhere on the Greek islands, a fisherman ties his boat up to the dock, hauling a small net of fish up with him. Oh, much fewer than yesterday. He heaves the fish over his shoulder and trudges onto the beach, heading home for dinner. And then he falters, spotting a strange shape on the sand. What is that? As he approaches, the figure of a woman begins to rouse herself, the tide rushing in over her body. Sand clings to her skin, and when she looks up, she blinks in confusion. Who are you? And are you all right? The woman looks around as if gaining her bearings. Slowly she stands, and then it's like like she's in his mind, probing, grasping, learning, and then she speaks in his tongue. Where am I? Like Greece, of course. I see. She takes a few steps away from him, staring out at the nearby town, her eyes widen in wonder. A new modern world, after an eternity of being confined. Uh, confined? Tell me, human. What the world is like now? What have I missed? I really don't know what you're talking about. The world is, as it always is, filled with too much technology and apathy. I see. I have much to learn. She digs her toes in the sand, smiling at the simple feeling of it. She turns her face up towards the sky. Uh, miss, are you all right? She laughs and turns back to him, her fangs descending. Oh, I will be. So, uh, just want to say it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Would you, could you be my neighbor? I hope y'all did enjoy. Uh, great book, Pixelberry. Two thumbs up. Could you, uh, not f this up? It's the only book I actually care about right now that you have. I'm sorry. It's, it's literally the only book. It's the only book I can still get emotional at. I, I kind of teared up just a touch, just a little tiny bit. I got clearly you could tell as Adrian I got I got into it didn't I oh yes anyway um I hope y'all did enjoy and uh, without further ado hey you know I want to thank you for watching please remember to like share and subscribe head down description below links to social media discord and if you like to support me and my content hey leave a comment let me know how did I do was it good was it bad criticism did I did I suck you know I want you to know you're you're critique is always welcome and uh thank you once again for supporting this channel if you're not able to hit that you know youtube button or if you have an amazon prime you don't want to drop on twitch for you know supporting me or if you don't want to follow me on mixer that's fine just please you know hit the bell notification and make sure you're subscribed please it'd be great you know just just being here and watching the content is a great way of supporting thank you without further ado catch you all in the next video bye